What's up everyone? 5280 Reefer here, back at you again with another video. For today's video topic, we're going to be talking about what I do for dosing in this aquarium for my traces and for my major elements. So to start it off, um, I dose this tank with Kalkwasser. Uh, overnight, my lights turn off around 10 o'clock and that's around what time my Kalkwasser kicks in and I dose about 5200 milliliters of Kalkwasser overnight and all the way one hour past my lights turning on. My pH has been extremely stable ever since I started using Kalkwasser. My nighttime low has been at the lowest point 8.1 and at the highest point during the day it's gotten up to 8.42 8.43 so nothing crazy um, nothing to really worry about for the highs but for the lows it's been extremely stable and I have seen phenomenal growth in the corals because of that so I have not even maxed out my total available evaporation rate. So this aquarium throughout the day evaporates about 7,200 milliliters a day of water. Um, and basically the way I did that, I have a 50, uh, 15 gallon reservoir from Innovative Marine and I filled it up and then I measured and calculated how long it took for that reservoir to be basically emptied out. And then I did some math and it came out to right around 7,200 milliliters a day of, of EVAP. And at this point right now on Kalkwasser, I'm only at 5,200, so I have another 2,000 milliliters to go before I even have to think about adding anything else for maintaining alkalinity and calcium. Um, for the moment that that does happen, I have a Reef Octopus, uh, the CR220 or whatever, 9 inch big old calcium reactor. I have a um, Kamora FX STP continuous duty pump, um, and a couple of other things. And I have a CO2 bottle, obviously, and a regulator, kind of sitting there collecting dust for now. I'm not even sure how long it's going to take for this tank to actually require a calcium reactor. Um, I mean, the tank, yes, it is still fairly young. I, I don't have very big colonies, but I still have a decent amount of corals in there that are very um, in high demand of alkalinity and calcium. They use it up a lot, a lot of SPS. Uh, really no softies um, besides the Ghanis I'm not sure if those count as LPS or softies I don't remember but in any case I have high demand coral and I haven't really seen even an inkling that I have to increase my dosage overnight not even close to talking about turning on the calcium reactor um, so what I will say is that what I did notice just as Chris Meckley at ACI, uh, what he did say was that when you do this method, your alkalinity will kind of shoot upwards when you do it, but I kind of do it different than he does. He bases, I mean, doses Kalkwasser based off of his pH overnight. I don't, I just dose a certain amount. Um, but what I did notice was originally, I basically went from 500 milliliters a night, that's where I started my Kalkwasser. I went from 500 milliliters a night and every week I would do my testing to see what was going on with my alkalinity. Was it coming up? Was it still going down? things like that and that's where I figured out that I need to go up to like 2500 and then a month later I was up to like 2700 
and slowly it went up to the 5200 point right now. But what I did see was that as I started using more and more Kalkwasser, I was freeing more and more of the carbonic acid. I was basically neutralizing more and more of it out of the reef tank and turning that into alkalinity. So my alkalinity did start slowly going up. At this point right now, uh, the last two, three weeks I have tested this tank, uh, my alkalinity has been between 10 and 11. Um, so not the worst, but mm, not the best. But in, in any case, I haven't really seen any negative results. I've got really good polyp extension. I haven't had any STN, RTN, knock on wood. Um, I haven't had any burnt tips or burnt growths or anything like that. Um, everything's been really, really solid and the corals seem to be very, very happy. Um, besides the big elephant in the tank, which I'm sure you guys have seen in the other videos uh, of basically some of the Aptasia that I have in that tank, but that's for a whole nother video. So, yeah, if you do decide to use Kalkwasser as a do dosing method, um, you will see your alkalinity jump up. Just don't be freaked out too much about it. It'll be okay. Um, it's not a big issue. I think alkalinity has been kind of incorrectly put up on such a high pedestal. And yes, the experience is anecdotal, right? Over time, people have proven that stable alkalinity uh, keeps the reef tank happy. If you have alkalinity swings, or uh, the corals don't look good and mortalities happen, um, RTN, STN, things like that. But I, I do think that there's other underlying causes to those issues and the coral mortality more so than just alkalinity. Because alkalinity in itself is just, it's, it is the capacity of our water, our buffer in the water for the pH, you know. Um, so I, I, it's not like alkalinity is a specific element. It is an equation. It is multiple things that show an end. You know what I mean? It's the buffering capacity of our water. Um, so yeah, don't worry too much if you have a alkalinity spike going upwards, uh, just keep it stable, your dosing, keep it consistent, and everything should slowly back down once the tank kind of balances out ionically. Um, for my dosing, I ended up buying um, a Roto Mold 16 gallon uh, reservoir off of Amazon, it's like 120 bucks or something like that. I drilled a little hole on top of it, I put in a special adapter that I was able to stick an acrylic rod all the way down about uh, a half inch from the bottom of the reservoir and then I was able to hook up my dosing line to that and then I, I drilled another tiny tiny little hole on the top of the lid to kind of prevent negative pressure because obviously if we're pulling liquids out of that container and it's completely sealed it's going to start like caving in or it's going to force air to come back in through the dosing line um, and it's going to mess everything up so I made a tiny little hole in the lid so as the doser is pulling that calc washer into the tank it's adding a little bit of air into that tank to prevent uh, it from you know collapsing or any of that other stuff um, I dose the calc washer into my overflow um, so I have a external overflow and it has two lids on it and I drilled a small little hole on one of the lids and I put the dosing line directly into that so I have no calcification no buildup in my sump anywhere I don't have any buildup in the overflow box or anything like that since it's very high flow it just kind of 
goes down real quick. It washes away. It doesn't have really a chance to build any calcium anywhere or anything like that. So I really like that spot. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was dosing wise was the trace elements that I dose into this tank. So I don't do water changes on this tank and um, trace elements are in my opinion important for the corals, the color, the growth, the health. Um, and for that, I dose uh, Fauna Marin. It's their uh, multi-elements A and B. And that was actually formulated and designed to be used with either a calcium reactor or something like Kalkwasser. So it doesn't have any calcium or alkalinity inside of it at all whatsoever. So it only has trace elements in it. And surprisingly, um, each liter bottle was like 50, 60 bucks. And I'm only dosing 25 milliliters of each a week. And that has been take, uh, taking care of my tank. It's been keeping it very stable and where I want it for traces. There's trace amounts of the trace elements in my tank. Um, another thing is I dose uh, Two Little Fishies Acro Power. Uh, I've always used that stuff. I've used Brightwells before. I've used the Reef Energy from Red Sea. I just like Acropower. It's 40 bucks for a liter of it and it lasts a very long time. I dose about 50 mils of it once a week. So Saturday is my testing day. So after I do all my testing, after I do everything I need to do with the tank, my maintenance, that's when I'll do my dosing so it doesn't uh, skew and mess up my uh, testing results. Um, I have noticed when I did stop using Acropower um, that I got less polyp extension out of my SPS and some of my LPS, um, but that could be anecdotal, that could be just me seeing things, but I definitely would like to think that I see a net positive from using Acropower. But yeah guys, um, enjoy some macro videos, um, we've pretty much gotten to the point where I've shown you most of the coral that I currently have in the tank. I am going to be adding more coral into this tank uh, as time goes on. I think next week I'm going to be picking up a bunch of new acros. Uh, I do plan on picking up some LPS and some, um, some brains and things like that that I'm going to put on the sand bed. So not going to be as many macro shots but i am going to try to keep uh taking as many of those as i can just to kind of show the progression of the coral growth and uh coloration sorry about the abrupt cutout guys of the video of my beautiful face <laughs> um i am still learning about videography and taking cuts and multiple scenes and cutting them in and out and stuff like that so give me time i'll get better but yeah so here are some macro shots uh, of some of the corals and how they're doing in the tank right now and basically going forward uh, the videos are going to have my hairy face in it uh, when i'm going to be talking about corals uh, different aspects of the tank, different things, my thoughts on it, my methodology behind all of it, and kind of educational videos. And um, hopefully it reaches someone out there and helps someone out in some way, some form. I know there's plenty of reef aquarium videos out there, um, but I'm going to be trying to do something in the sense of having these macro shots and uh, with this new camera set up I have definitely been able to get a whole lot closer to what I'm visually seeing myself with my eyes for color and for clarity um, with these 4k videos and shooting at 4k and the lens definitely makes a big difference too but I think we'll get better with that as well um, with this one I tried a little bit different shutter speed uh, to match more the lens 
just uh, let me know. Let me know what you guys think about the video quality. Let me know what you guys think of the colors. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the sharpness. And just overall about videos of what I can improve, uh, what I can do better. Um, I am most likely not going to be having any kind of music uh, with my videos anymore. Uh, I did get a uh, copyright even though it was not supposed to be copyrighted the song um, it said that the user allows that music to be used on YouTube but for some reason it still has a copyright it wasn't a strike or anything like that um, but I just don't want that on my account at all so yeah what we're looking at here is a sunset Monty I uh, got it as a tiny frag and it has encrusted really really well definitely love the colors on it this piece here is um, rainbow loom um, got it as a tiny little nub and it's definitely beautiful especially since the polyps are yellow and green at the base and got the purples and yellows in the coral itself can't wait till this one grows out I don't think I can really wait till any of them grow out. Uh, this right here is good old PC Rainbow. Um, I've said it many times before. I think it's one of the most underrated corals that you can get as an acro. I mean, the colors are just wonderful. And funny thing is, it's getting like 750 par when the T5s turn on. And it's still got the yellows in it. Uh, this piece right here is um, UC Shortcake. Old school, classic, but you really can't beat it. It's got a wonderful light, light, weird green base to it and body. And then uh, the coralites are rose pink and the polyps are definitely beautiful as well with rose and the super long polyp just being white. Um, this is, I think it's ATC or ATL or something like that, Strawberry Fields. Um, definitely a very dense coral. I got it as a tiny, tiny nub and it has popped a bunch of new little nubs and very tightly knit. Uh, this coral right here is a uh, bubblegum digi. Uh, it's got a blue like body with the tips being green and uh, the polyps being orange. It's definitely extremely bright and you can see it across the room. Uh, this is Reef Raff Pink Cadillac. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Keep on reefing.